Hello Tube. What you see right here is a bunch of stuff that got into the mail today. And, uh, you know, I've got some RAM right here. These are 8-2GB DDR2 fully buffered DIMMs, which uh, means that I've got a total of 16GB of DDR2 FB DIMM right here, which is, of course, for the Mac Pro, which is right over there, which is running 8-1GB modules at the moment, and these are 8-2GB modules. they will upgrade to 16GB, which will be plenty for as long as I'm going to use the Mac Pro. I'm never going to upgrade it to... Yeah, I'm never going to upgrade it to 32 gigs or something ridiculous like that. And also I got this AV to HDMI converter. We'll test out the RAM shortly. We'll test them out uh, pretty much at the same rate as uh, at the same time as this thing, I think. We'll have to see how that goes. What this thing does is it converts, you know, analog AV signals to HDMI. So you can use an old game console or VCR and all that good stuff on a TV or display that only has HDMI. This will also carry the audio, of course, because you've got audio inputs, so you also got uh, audio through HDMI. And the reason I wanted this is because, you know, ever since I got my little NAS over there, I uh, can't really, you know, play my old consoles. For instance, the GameCube that's down there. I cannot play it unless I, you know, hook it up to some kind of uh, recording device via USB, so I can at least, you know, use the preview window to play the games but they're all very grainy and all that good stuff and this thing supposedly also upscales the image very well and deinterlaces it very well as well that's from what, I, uh, what I've heard so you can actually run your old console on a new monitor or a new TV that only has HDMI with audio like I said before so that's all good so that's pretty much what I got into the mail today I'll just pop this open right here. I will make a separate video on this thing. I just wanted to, uh, you know, go over the good stuff here. But the main focus for this video is on the RAM. So I'll make this one right after probably, or maybe later this afternoon. But first, let's get dirty and uh, get the RAM installed. And we'll see if it actually works. Which would be very nice. Okay, so we've got a bunch of RAM on my desk now. These are all the old memory modules. Got a Hynix and a Kingston module right here. And two other Hynix modules right here. The Hynix modules are all PC2-6400F, which is DDR2-800, fully buffered. And, uh, okay, so is the Kingston. And I've got four HP modules right here. Which all originate from my girlfriend's Mac Pro. These are all PC2-5300F. I've also got 16 gigs now of PC2 5300F in here. And uh, I'm not going to close the case just yet, I'm just going to lock the drive for now. Because if I boot it up and uh, the thing starts uh, to bring up any problems, I can see it because if a memory module is defective, a red light will uh, show up. And of course, before we can power it up, we have to plug in the power supply which I totally did not forget to do just now. Anyway, let's power it up and see what she does. Let's take a look at the memory riser boards. There's the bong. I'm not detecting any red lights. So I think we're good. I think all memory modules are working. At least, there's no defective pair to speak of just yet. So I'm just going to get my ass back in the chair. And we're actually going to do a reboot because it's going to try to boot into Windows and it's, it currently has a Windows CD in it in its drive. It's not going to like me for doing this, but uh, it has to be done. Of course, we hold down the option key to bring up the boot menu. Yep, it's a Windows CD, alright. It's my old Windows XP Pro CD-ROM, which uh, apparently bit the dust. 
because I cannot uh, extract it to an ISO file and I've also not been able to uh, you know write it directly to a USB flash drive so I can install it on my ThinkPad right here because I want to try and see how XP runs on this thing I expect it to run pretty well but you know type in a password It's true. One of my USB flash drives does not have a petition table. Okay, about this Mac. There we go, people. Mac Pro early 2008. 16 gigabytes of 667 MHz DDR2 FB DIMM. Oh yeah. Now this is one beast Mac Pro right here. Awesome GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 8 cores of pure Xeon performance, sort of, and an SSD of course, all that good stuff. So it seems uh, the RAM upgrade has been successful, gotta love it. So yeah, what I'm gonna do with these old uh, RAM modules, well, I gotta go up online, and uh, I'll see if I can find a buyer for them. They all work. They all work just fine, actually. And uh, yeah, that's all I can say about them. I'm gonna go up online, and uh, we'll see if anybody wants them. I'll put them up for a really competitive price, so uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. I mean, it's eight gigs of DDR2 FB DIMM. It's like half the price of consumer grade DDR2, roughly when you buy it second hand. So I should be, you know, somewhere around 40 euros for the whole pack. That should be a decent price. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video on my RAM upgrade of my Mac Pro. That's now running 16 gigabytes instead of just 8. And I uh, got, you know, fully matched sets of memory now instead of, you know, some random gibberish right here. It's not, not really matched, but it works. And that's, you know, that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Like the video if you liked it. And if you didn't, then, uh, well, that's too bad. I'm always open to uh, constructive criticism, of course. Don't forget to, uh, you know, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, have a nice day, people.